Yeah. It's a passing back. How's that? Max, come as your You good? You're back. Okay. Okay, good. We're Okay. soccer. Okay, so. There's, 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 guys, there's like, this is a field. I, 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 it's like, it's not even, I don't even know where you'd start. We're, we're all talking like, wait, what do you do? Like, first step is move the cows to the side. They've done that. I mean, I don't know. It's crazy. Anyway, um, um, but yeah, so what we can do, I mean, we can't do a ton right now, but and we always feel guilty when like Matt's here for eight months and we're here for like, you know, yeah, hours. Um, but so this part right here is the soccer field. Here, so I'm gonna try and can you move that computer forward. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's good. And just hold that right there, will you? So here's here's uh, the soccer field. You can see them. There's like it's like a chair. See the goal? It's a chair. They have two of them. And that's what they're using for the goals. Some have Crocs. One kid has Crocs. The rest are barefoot. And those are like boulders. They're rocks. So like to fix that, we're gonna bring a tractor in. Some guy has a tractor that we can borrow or rent or whatever. And it's like four hundred dollars. Matt thinks it's gonna take two days. So we're gonna grade it out flat. Uh, someone has some the Spaniard crew that's here running the orphanage has uh has uh has soccer goals that they're, they're they're gonna donate or bring or whatever um anyway so but that's the plan it's gonna we're, uh you can see there's the the ngo tent back there it's just like pvc and uh you know it's like a, just a tarp really that's the only physical aid you see i mean i, I don't know like there's these other buildings back here too i guess that's these are from the Spaniard guys, uh, but they just sleep on the plywood there. But it's out of the rain and stuff like that. And uh, anyway, that's the hand washing station. Everyone's of course trying to be good with the cholera and all that. Um, anyway, yeah, so that's the plan. We're gonna fix the the field. Hopefully, you can donate um, some money uh, and help us get that done. And then I think the next plan is, the next plan is to get some water. They have a little pump over here from a well, but it's like, you can't drink it. Um, in fact, every day, and the pump only brings up so much. It's 50 feet deep. There's only so much water they can get from that. So they'd actually drive a truck down to the river and uh, and uh, load water. And it's it's kind of gnarly. Like, the, the water's like, it's probably got cholera in it. It's a big, nasty river. Or not, I mean, a little nasty river, but it's... Uh, they scoop up buckets and bring that back in a truck. So the plan is to get uh, rain catchments. They're like, Matt says they're $400. It's like a system you get um, that makes the water, and it's still not really drinkable, but it's, 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 you can use it for construction, you can use it for other things. So um, that's, that's what we're going to try and do. Oh, sweet. Liz just said there's two donations for $100. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Um, <laughs> Steve's giving advice on the telephone. I, this is my first telephone. So he said, haven't you people ever seen a telephone? telephone? So yeah, the needs right now are... Show, are, show uh, I think they can, they can see it. Show Greg getting his hair done. Greg's getting his hair done here. Yeah, there he is. Um... um and uh, yeah, so that's oh yeah, that's the kitchen back there. I wish you could see the kitchen. It is. Oh, that's a $3, yeah, the kitchen is it's three thousand dollars. That's gonna give solid walls. Um, Matt, tell us about the kitchen. What what's needed for the kitchen? Uh, we, we need a couple more uh, rocket stoves. Because uh, uh, right now they're cooking a little stove fire. Uh, we have one. The design is only good for cooking certain types of things, and a lot of what they cook, they think that. Different design. The main thing that we need there. And apparently, that's. So we're, we're going to make it. We need another kitchen. We need to build this, another kitchen over there for the school. Um, yeah. 
That's Ma three thousand dollars. Matt's Matt's wearing long sleeve too. He uh, he had dengue fever, so he has his wife making him wear long sleeves. Um, there's two more kids. Yeah, there's John Mark. Okay, it's Matt. Give a quick intro to John Mark. Okay, so back in um, in June, end of June, oh, then, um, I w came around, I was going around with uh, different organizations trying to find you know the best place for us to use our money down here, and I was um, going with Sustain Haiti. It's a, a student group out of Provo, and um, we were visiting different orphanages. They do, you know, square foot gardening and some microfinance, and, and they volunteer some orphanages, teaching English and playing with the kids, and, and I went around, to, I was going from, I went to about three different orphanages, and when I came here, there was just, there were two tents, that's all. I mean, nothing else, you know, the kids were going to the bathroom in the field, it was, you know, they were fetching water, it was just nothing. And, um... John Mark here was just, I, I met him, and from the beginning, he was just such a nice guy. He didn't, he went, didn't uh, approach me to, you know, to ask and beg for anything like other, you know, people would. He just, he was just a really nice guy from the beginning, and um, he was, I could tell he took such good care of the kids. You know, he, um, he loved it when these volunteers So he was with the kids, right? He, he was with the kids. Care he was, of the kids? Yeah. He, he gathered, he had some kids staying with him. And then uh, he gathered more after the earthquake. And you have kids, a lot that were right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jean Marc has kids. Uh, Andy, right? Andy, uh, Andy, Andy, uh, Jessica, and Jessica. So he, Jean Marc has two kids, two kids, and then he's basically taking care of these forty-three others. So he he was an orphan himself when he was when he was uh, a child. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he uh, he grew up here in, in the Lebanon area. But um, you know what? One thing I I've been with John Mark where we'd go. I take him to Lebanon to to run an errand, and we'd come back, and the kids, you know, they just get so happy, and they come and they hug him, and you know, they're just so happy to, to see him. And I I could see there's something different from the other orphanages I visited. You know, there wasn't that relationship with the the, the children and, and their um, their caretakers. But with, with him, I could just tell that you know, with the, there's a difference in the kids because they're well taken care of, and there's also you know the difference in that uh, they respected him and, and loved him. Um, and so it's he's just a great man to have in charge of all this. Um, so yeah, John Mark, tell us. So where did you grow up? Uh, I'm happy for Matt, for everybody from here to help me and my children. Uh, because now I have uh, the school with school. Uh, for me, the, uh, the Matt give me the internet, battery, uh, everything. I'm happy. Uh, I hope, I hope. Uh, I hope uh, more more things in the land because the land is in need the garden, the fish, the uh, chicken coop. Uh, uh, I hope, I hope, uh, I hope, uh, I hope the little person uh, give me give me I uh, some money uh, to continuous continuous work and the uh, land for the children. Sweet. So yeah. So and he's talking about the, the master plan they want to have here. They want to have uh, like a fish pond. They want to have animals. They want to have uh, beehives. Stuff that's going to generate food and potentially income um, and skills to teach these kids. Uh, you know, to have to teach them literal skills uh, to, to you know they can take when they're older. Um, also, they're doing their their the plan is technology and English. So Matt happens to be a, a, an English Spanish teacher. Um, and so he's, he's been focused on that as well. And then technology, just getting them used to computers and, um, y you know, cause that's just, that's a kind of a long term goal, which is a, probably a really good one. Yeah. I mean, we just, we asked them, you know, what, what skills do they want most to learn? And, you know, that's, that's what people are really, you know, the nicest schools. That's the only the, the wealthiest few can attend schools and teach those kinds of things. And we have the resources to be able to do that. You know, through a volunteer program, we can set up a really good English program. And, uh, 
something. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, uh, with Imagine Learning, that'll help with the English, but also teach these kids computer literacy. But you think, you know, the way the world, the global economy is going, what the, the opportunities these, these kids will have if they, you know, speak English and, and have computer skills, but also just the doors it opens uh, with the. <laughs> John Mark's a popular guy. He's blowing up right now. <laughs> but you know, the opportunities it'll it'll give for the volunteers, the people that come here to work. When these these kids will be speaking English, and you know, in a year to two years, you know, and they'll be able to to you know have a. Uh, oh, a real relationship with the volunteers that come down there won't be that language barrier so much. So there's a lot of benefits of of doing doing that. It's not just to try to you know, say hello, recognize the kids. It's a uh, it's a really valuable skill. It's good, man. So let's see. We're gonna get some more kids here. So Seth is being mauled here, um, and. Uh, He's, uh, yeah, getting his hair done. Um, you can see dinner's, dinner's cleaned up. The, the, okay. The orphanage mothers are, are um, the mamas are cleaning up the dinner. Um, you have to cover everything with fly or with like nets and mesh because there's a lot of flies. Um, and uh, yeah, so there's, there's, um, but that's, that's what's going on here. So, um, yeah, so I think the kids are going to... Okay, if there's trouble with PayPal, yeah, you can donate. You can donate on the PayPal link. On the PayPal link, you can go there. It looks like it looks like it's a PayPal login. Read it. There should be a... Uh, down at the bottom, it's hidden. PayPal does that. It's stupid, but it says... It says, uh, you know, donate without a, a PayPal account. That should work. Um, take a look if there's, if there's um, any of that. Um, Michelle asked, were the kids orphans before the earthquake? So, I think some kids were orphans. Yeah. No, so, um, there's about six of them that, that are true orphans. The, the term orphans is used pretty loosely here in Haiti. Um, most of these kids are abandoned, um, is their situation. Um, Sorry, keep talking. So, uh, but yeah, they, uh, but yeah, the majority of them were before the earthquake, and then I'd say... 25, I don't know exact numbers, but 25% to 50% were taken on post-earthquake. So, okay, John Mark, come back in. Okay, guys, so this is the main man back again. John Mark, he's a popular man. We don't know how long we're going to have him. Um, so, yeah, if you have questions for this guy. Um, any questions for the man? He's here full time. This is what he does. He he's, lives here. He's here trying to make it work, trying to make it happen. Um, oh, someone stepped on a dog. Um, yeah, I don't know. Two donations. Any questions or, or oh, packet seeds. Hey, Matt. Is the dog okay? Dog's cool. Dog's good. He's he's. He's cleared up. Um, John Mark, is there anything that you need that they can help with? I hope that you help me to build the, the land. Uh, uh, because we need to get the children in a normal situation. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Oh, louder. Louder. Okay, we'll do louder. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moi espérer que moi voulez joindre tout est possible pour continuer construire terrain. I hope to find, you love it too. I hope to find uh, help to build the the land parce que nous voulez tout mon nouveau bon site à son normal pour manger normal pour aller l'école normal. Because I need all the children uh, all the kids are live in a normal situation and eat in a normal world. Yeah. Uh, c'est ça que fait nous voulons que 
et pour nous gagner jardin, pour nous gagner poulailler, pour nous gagner bagages souterrains pour tout le monde capable de jouer, non seulement pour manger, mais pour nous capable de revendre pour nous encore pour nous occuper. That's what I need that we we grow animals and for we the children can eat and can sell our wood to have the money to take care of the children. Sweet. Okay. Merci. Merci. Um, yeah, should we do a song? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So guys, yeah, like, dude, Haiti, there's so much need here. Um, see the solar panels in the back? Um, I don't know where those are from, donated or something, but that helps with the power, and then you can hear a generator for when they use, like, they have a welding tool and stuff. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's... So they have, they have school supplies, they have enough clothing, that kind of thing, they, it comes in abundance. Um, but right now, because they're trying to make a sustainable school, they're really needing money. They're needing money to do the next step, um, which is the soccer field, the step after that is the water barrels, the step after that is the kitchen. There's a number of steps in, that we need, and if we had 50, well, I think it's 100,000 total, it would have everything finished. So that's what they're doing. They're going to Um... That's Sarah. She, yeah, she's our sister. She came down. Um, we came down together uh, with some other friends. Uh, Matt's here for the duration. But uh... okay, I think the kids are gonna sing. Okay, Watson, we want you to. And then after the song, we'll have Watson translate it. They wrote this song themselves. Okay, so this is a song they wrote themselves. It's about the earthquake. They're gonna sing it, and then Watson's gonna translate. Okay, here, I'm going to set this down. Hey, buddy. Hey, yeah. Can I move hey. your clay toy? Sorry. He's like... Oh. All right. Okay. Andy. Um, yeah, it might be good. Okay, we're ready. Sure. Translate the words. So they wrote that song. Watson's going to translate the meaning. What is the first, this next one? Oh. Oh, another, another one? one? Oh, okay. Sorry. Total, total orphanage noob here. So, uh, okay, here's another song.
Okay. Okay, Watts is going to translate the words. The meaning, the, the, what the song? In the first song, they complain the situation before and after the, the earthquake. Uh, the major part in the song, they sing about they don't respect the chair, the, the, the great, the, the, the young man, but they afraid of gangster, but they always complain the situation and they congrats the OAA because they no. cares of them. That's what they sing in the first song. OAA is the name of the orphanage. <laughs> Okay. In the second song, they complain, they still complain. They, they said they, they need something and they go to the neighborhood and the neighborhood they humiliate them uh, and the OAA take care of them. <laughs> because of the government don't don't care about the kids in in their mind they complain there's nothing uh, there's nothing special for the kids because they are they, they are orphans. situation is tragic after the janvier, but you know, they are not experiencing Even the the situation was bad after uh, 12 January. In their mind, they think God will help them to to get a better life. They said, I will stay here because I I believe in progress. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Watson. Thank you. So, other questions? One of the amazing things uh, for me has been um, has been we spent um, most of the day yesterday in Port-au-Prince which is about 20 miles away and there's just you know there's the the tent cities are unbelievable they're just they're endless and there's just so much desperation and we didn't you know we didn't go into their homes or anything of course but they're just they're so on the street there's so much begging there's so much um, so much sadness but at this little camp there's the kids are happy they're well fed and they've all lived through something pretty miserable this year and they're just so satisfied they're so happy and and just playful and I just it's amazing the contrast and I love that the directors here are really looking at long-term solutions for these kids and um, really making them, giving them skills and giving them, you know, a chance to have a future, which I just didn't see anywhere in Port-au-Prince. It was just unbelievable. And here, there's just so much hope. Come, come talk. Okay, we're gonna have Gregory come talk. Okay. Yeah, he's got a good. Gregory. This is Gregory. Come on. Come over here, please. Hey, can you talk? You can play the video game. Deal? I had to bribe Gregory with video games. Okay. Come on, take yourself. So introduce him. Gregory's 15. So tell, yeah, um, he's learning to read. He just started learning to read three days ago. Yeah, he has, he's never been to school. Um, yeah, we, he, we, we got him. He was in. He was working um, and not getting, not getting paid. Uh, his, his dad died a long time ago, and his mom, um, his mom died in the earthquake. So he was just uh, living on the street. Um, and uh, anyways, 
Uh, he's, a, he's a great guy. Yeah. Let's see. Questions? Pepperoni pizza. Pepperoni pizza. <laughs> That's from one of the study guides we were looking at. I am a boy. I, <laughs> I am a boy. He actually is very... Uh, El hablar espanol. He's really smart. He's really strong. And he, uh, we're going to get him... Gonna get him uh, up to speed on on reading. We had uh, we we had these pickaxes today, <laughs> trying to move this dirt, and it was me, uh, Gregory. There were like five of us who all just came yesterday, and we were like so tired. Gregory comes in and like bah, 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 and like does the whole piece. Like he did the whole thing. That totally showed us up. But anyway, he likes video games. What else? Uh, uh, I don't know, questions? One said. It says, go Gregory. Hi, Gregory. Hi, Gregory. Cute. Cute. Oh, what's Ben? Ben. Whoa. <laughs> Good job, Lol. How tall? How tall? He would tell He's uh, probably five, eight. I don't know. That's a guess. Do you play uh, soccer, football? Yes. And you're going to do something. I like soccer. Football. Soccer. Oh, Guru Bala. And Jared's iPod. Guru Bala. Guru Bala. Guru Bala. Guru Bala. Guru Bala. From who? Katie. Say hi, Katie. Where's it going on, Lua? Katie. Say hi, Katie. Hey, Katie. Katie, I love Maybe. you. Uh, <laughs> okay. So Katie's you've asked about babies. There are probably what four babies here. Here's Katie. some babies. There's Carrie. Oh, oh, oh. Matt. Hold on huh? here. How many babies? Oh, I'd, there's about five. That's what I thought. Yeah. Four There's or five Carrie. that should be in diapers. Kelly. They're in Good diapers day. sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you see him? Yeah. He can do a little smile. Here's a guy. Oh, Katie. Como estas? Here's Andy. Estas bien. <laughs> He th Katie was a volunteer that was here for a month. She's spearheading the English program, and uh, I don't think she's watching. But Gregory, lo Gregory loves. But he, Katie. Gregory thought yes. Katie was watching. He got real excited. She left. She left him his. Uh, her iPod. Yeah. Her, yeah her, so her iPod. they're asking about the daily routine. So they wake up early, um, six ish. Oh, they're up before that. Oh. They're up at yeah. Okay, but, I yeah. got up at six. Um, yeah, they guess they were all awake. And then they, what do they do, Matt? They all get, go through a bath. Yeah, they get, they get group bathing. They get one of the caretakers, that, they all break up in groups. And most days they get a bath. Uh, and then, so they're they clean and get dressed. They sing, they have the morning songs that they sing, like usually some, uh, like three songs or so. And then, uh, then breakfast. They get on their uniforms. The ladies do the girls' hair and with the bows. And then they have breakfast. For spaghetti noodles usually. Spaghetti noodles, noodles with uh, mayonnaise and ketchup. Yeah, and uh, sometimes it's uh, plantain bananas with a red sauce, a fish sauce over it. And uh, get yeah. see, como ye. And get to school. Closer to the mic, Matt. They say oh. you're not loud enough. Oh, and then they go to school at about 7:30 or so. Uh, are they all safe? Yes, they're here at the orphanage. We're safe. Um, we're we're out just a, out away in the the country, and it's um we need to get a security fence up, but it's cost that's, about ten thousand dollars. One of the it. steps, one so of the phases. Just, but that's we we want to do that before you know, as soon as we can, just to uh, uh, you know make sure everyone is safe. But it's it's a you know the community around here really has been happy with what we're doing, and so we have the protection kind of the community because you know it's a tight knit. Uh, community there with the tent city, and you know, with us offering the education to them, you know, and and um, bring us bringing a lot of things to the community that they're happy to have. they they in turn, you know, kind of have our back. So they're in, they're they go to school for about seven thirty, and they go for about four hours, um, and then they after school they get one little recess break.
Um, after school, and school is on this little campus on this site, just some rooms that uh, Matt had built and and probably built himself. And then they um, then they come back to this shel this little sheltered area, um, which is closer to where they sleep, and they change their clothes, get out of their uniforms, and then they. Um, then they have free time and you know they play we brought out some games today and had structured games like memory and jenga and uh, none of us speak Cre creole so we're trying to teach them how to play these games and and um they're happy to take turns but they don't always have to so it was you know we were having to kind of teach them you can't just run up and start playing jenga you have to take your turn and who's going to play when and um and so they play game, or they can do something like that. But that's why we want the soccer field more than anything. Is there's this three or four hour block where they just need some time to play, and there's no good place for them to run. So, um, so they have three, three or four hours um, in there. They have lunch, and so you caught them eating lunch today, and um, and in, they're in that break time right now. And then it starts to be evening. And what's their evening routine, Matt? Uh, it depends on. On the night, uh, sometimes we'll watch a, a a movie. We have some movies in French. That's on the um, weekend, usually. Yeah, usually oh, on on the weekends. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, and then um, you know they they always sing before they go to bed. Uh, you know, one of the things right now there's not you know near enough structure. We just don't have the the resources. We haven't um, been able to to get that far yet. But uh, when sustain Haiti comes back with their volunteer program um, where they'll be teaching the, the English and computers in, in, in May. Uh, they're also, part of their program is going to be, uh, uh, they'll be helping with uh, the, like a, a social wellness a aspect, you know, social, physical um, uh, help. Well, they're, they'll be uh, doing a program where they have a, a lesson every day. It teaches just just life lessons that these kids don't get because they don't have you know parents that are involved. And so you know each day we'll spend about 15 minutes in discussion you know about um, just a you know sharing or, or whatever. You know we have a, a manual that, that we use as a guide. But then also each day there's a different activity. Like it'll be you know uh, music one day, dancing one day, a, a new sport uh, one day. Um, you know there's a movie night one day. But so there's a we're trying to you know, plan out to fill up that that leisure time with you know, productive activities and using our volunteer program to, to give them some structure. So some of, I'm a, I'm going to answer some of these questions um, if I can, or I'll ask Matt. None of us really speak French. Um, I mean, those of us who are here for four days, Matt's learning a little bit. But mostly, um, they they know some English, and so that's um, there are some translators that can go back and forth. Um, and that'll be, you know, I'm telling you with this. Imagine learning; it's an individualized yeah. program. Like it is, uh, I'm. I think within once we start that in May, within a year, like They'll speak. at yeah. least yeah. you know, 75 percent of that language barrier will be will be down. Like they're. The kids are, are quick learners, and with a program as good as that, and, and getting the daily uh, daily repetition, they'll they'll do a really good job, and that'll help a lot. You know, I mean, you think a few years down the road, just how you know, the, the relationship they'll be able to have with these with, with these kids will be awesome. So, some other questions: Do they need diapers? They have diapers. Some of the uh, women just choose not to use them. It's easier to let the kids kind of run around naked, so they do. Um, they didn't before. That's something that, yeah, that's a recent addition. Oh. Some of it's, part of it's just they're used to not having them. I mean, you okay. look at the, the caretakers here, people, none of their kids have ever used diapers. They're coming right here from the, you know. The, These the, little tent city. The, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, so, but we, they're, they are available to them. We have to remind them to use them. Um, but, yeah, I mean, even with their clothes, the, the clothes get washed every day. Um, but it's not every, every kid doesn't have their own set of clothing necessarily other than their uniforms um, the clothes just kind of go or return into piles um, where kids just know this is my pile this is my size and they just pick out whatever they want for the day when they get home from um, school but it's not you know they don't have personal possessions necessarily there aren't there isn't anything that you know, a pretty necklace or a little, you know, little hair ribbons that belong to each child. Um, 
and that hopefully will come with time. But right now, um, right now there's there isn't any of that. Let's see, um, what else? Is there room for more kids? Uh, oh, good question. Right, you know, Jean Marc is in, in charge of that, and he they they have you know he, they have a. A tight schedule, you know. They have to you know, be respectful. I mean, these kids, compared to other orphanages that I've been at, these kids are very obedient. You know, they they're respectful and and they have a lot more structure than some of the other ones I went to that were just chaotic. Um, but you know, they have to go to bed at a certain hour and and those sort of things. So some of the kids, the older kids, when they they if if they're not going to live by those standards, he um, he uh, they can't he won't, stay. Yeah, he won't let them stay. Um, but we only we're gonna right now uh we have to stay at where we're at um and just to be sustainable we're just not able to to take too many more and we're gonna have to um, you know keep it at, at around 50. Uh, ideally we'd, we'd like to be able to take in 100 kids um but that would just uh take more money yeah, take more money and we just got to uh, focus on these kids that we know and love, and and that's really hard. But that really, that's the only way you can get anything productive done here in Haiti. I mean, there's not a day that goes by I don't have someone that 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 doesn't ask. That everyone asks me for a job every day. I run into people. You know, everyone needs a job. Everyone needs help. Everywhere you look, it's just overwhelming. And you, the only way you can get anything done is to focus on a small group and see it through with them. Um, you can just, you know, just that. What's that old story about the seashell or whatever, yeah. the starfish thrown back in the ocean? I mean, that's you have to just focus. You're not making a huge difference for the whole country, but with these kids, you know, we will make a difference for them. And, and there's a there's a dual philosophy with these orphanages, you know, um, saying we need to give kids a kind of room to just play and be kids. Um, where this orphanage and this uh, school really wants to talk about teaching them some work ethic, teaching them um, some skills. And of course, you work in play, and of course you work in, you know, happy kids, but um, there, are, there are people actually fighting this group, saying that it's not okay to let, you know, to make the kids go feed animals. It's not okay to make them, um, you know, move dirt. And, you know, and my philosophy as a parent is, Make your kids work. Yeah, <laughs> and I, mean, I like any, the idea of these you kids. Up and you have chores yeah. and things to do to contribute. And, and it's, uh... so, so I, and again, I see such happiness here. These kids, you know, they have some responsibilities and 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 it's okay. And I, I can't wait to see, the, yeah. see them when they're really working. They like when the sheets up. Um, uh, let's see, are the children adoptable? No. Um, we've never, we haven't got that far in the process, and it really is, it's so hard to adopt in Haiti right now. Um, the problem is, like you said, most of these kids have a, a living parent, even though that parent has, has abandoned them. Um, and it's just, uh, you know, we're, you know, we're happy to, when we see a parent that, that loves their kids and, and um, wants to be involved in their life, we're very supportive of that, but it's just not the case in 95% of the situations, and, and so, uh, but, it, yeah, it's so hard to donate and so expensive right now that it's just, um, yeah, we aren't even, we have so, we have enough to, to worry about right now. Um, Hey, let's, see. let's do. Uh, let's meetings? get our guy, Brennan, okay, we got real quick. Okay. All right, this is Brennan. <laughs> Brennan, how long you been here? Uh, two weeks. Uh. How long you stay? Oh, yeah, um, I'm leaving for the elections, uh, and then I'll be back in December. There's elections here for how long? From the 15th on to uh, December, so I'll be back like December 5th, and then how? I'll, I'll stay till about March or so. Cool. How old are you? 19. 19 year old kid just wants to come down, party in Haiti. Here he is. <laughs> guys, yeah, the guys uh, just Goodbye. bust ass all day, and works, works his, <laughs> works his, uh, works really hard, and uh, yeah, he's uh, he's awesome. That's right. He lives in a little tent. Lives in a little tent wrapped with some tarps for the rain. Um, that's his, that's his deal. It's pretty awesome. Good rad kid. <laughs> Who's this? Kelly. Oh. Kelly. Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a little sore right there. Um, 
Yeah. Who's this? Billy. Who? Spaniards? No. No? Just visitors? Yeah, they, they come to uh, 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 uh. These guys are, looks like we have some visitors here. Um, they're here to look at doing some compost toilets. Yeah, the toilets over here are, uh, scary. It's that one in the back. You can see it right in the middle of the screen with the four little doors. It's nasty. It's like a hole in the ground. It's covered in flies, but at least it's like contained and san you know, somewhat sanitary. Uh, yeah, it's it's bad. Um, I wish you could blog the. I wish you could live broadcast the smell. Um, <laughs> but you can't. Um, anyway. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, hey. Uh, Watson, can you come translate this? Okay, so someone's asking about it being rocky. There's just... There, Orewa, kids. There's, that's Daniel kind of a Bond. parking lot area where yeah. they're playing right now. But everything hey, is green and grassy nice, beyond it. Nice, nice. Have a nice day and oh. talk quick. Oh, have a nice we day and talk quick? Uh, yeah. But they're saying, how do you grow anything? Because those are the rocks. So here, show them other directions so you can see how green yeah. it is. Yeah, it's actually super really? lush. So that's not green. Well, <laughs> you can see. It. I mean, it's it's yeah, yeah it's wide it's and really wide. It's really green and beautiful. Everything just grows wide, uh, wild. And so you, and you can see between these buildings here. You see how green that is and lush that is. That's like we're kind of in this green pasture. Uh, but yeah, it's really awesome there. I mean, it's really, really lush and green everywhere. It's, you know, it's the Bahamas or whatever. I mean, it's the Caribbean. Um, so, uh, you know, it's similar to all that, but. Uh, how far is the ocean? Two miles. Two miles from here. So they're hoping to, once they get kind of things in place to get a bus or something where they can take, um, field trips. You know, once a month, get the kids off this campus. Um, they can get to the beach. Not, most have never even been to Port-au-Prince, which is, you know, close. Yeah, and so they're hoping to, you know, get them up into the mountains and, and out of here um, in a safe way. So so that's part of the overall plan. Any questions? Holes in the ground are better than the alternative, which is the case true. Of the it's true. Get those kids surfing. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Airplane? Do you want to show? Oh, he wants an airplane? Yeah. Oh. All right. Maybe a week. How are you doing out here? What? What are you doing out here? They're more than willing to help you out with, uh, with their uh, um, Creole. Um, they just ask you the same thing over and over again, so eventually, it, eventually you'll catch on to it. Um, I only know a little bit, just to kind of get around, but that's about it. All right, well, wrap it up. Yeah. So we're gonna give a report. And so you can see we had a big rainstorm coming over there. So there's clouds. Um, I don't know actually anything about the weather, so it may or may not rain, but it looks like it. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's it. Uh, Matt's giving these guys a tour. The guys, crazy busy. Um, He's giving them. He's he's showing them how they can help. If you look over here, you can see the the huts, the 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 the, the, the school buildings they're building. You can see all the earth bags over there. It's kind of hard to see. It's in the distance, but uh, it's uh, yeah, it's awesome stuff that's going on here. Um, they uh, yeah, total donations are about almost three thousand um, dollars. Awesome. So that'll get the that'll get the. Uh, the, the water catchments and then the uh, you know, get this get the kids off these rocks and get some nice soft dirt in there to play with and uh, nice flat flat dirt so um, that's it.
Thanks. Now. We may try it later, uh, later tonight, but for now, that's good. Okay, everyone. Hey, everyone, say say bye bye. Bye bye, Kathy. <laughs>